Now this, this is an audience. This is, uh, this is exciting. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm, I'm super excited to see each and every one of you and also have you still here uh, to hear my talk. I appreciate it. You didn't get too sauced by the free wine outside and you decided to stay and, and, and catch me talk. So hopefully I can entertain you for a little bit. When I take a moment and look back on my life, I'm constantly being reminded of this love, hate, relationship I've had with technology. There have been incredible times and experiences together. When I built my first computer, I built my first website, I touched the first computer, I would build computers from the spare parts of older machines for those who were less fortunate and could not afford the latest in technology. But there were also times when my relationship with technology was not great and I wanted to be as far away from technology as I could be. As I had quickly become everyone's 1-800-FIX-IT anytime something went wrong. I would get a phone call, my CD-ROM is stuck, as if I'm a mechanic and know every gear that's in the CD-ROM and I'm going to be the one to fix it. I would get a phone call, my Wi-Fi is down, how can I, how can I get back on? I would come over, I would unplug a cable, I would plug a cable back in, oh my God, it works, what'd you do? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> but nonetheless, as exciting as this was, it, it burnt me out at a time that was so exciting and so influential in my life. Now for context, I grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s, to date myself just a little bit, when technologies like personal computers Mobile phones and the internet were just becoming accessible in households across America. This period in time offered joyful discovery and endless amounts of opportunities. This would be a time when technology would be a driver for my educational pursuits, where I would sit in classrooms like we're surrounded by today daydreaming of when I could get done with class and get to the computer lab and get a chance to discover something new. Figure out something new to develop on my website as the little Christmas lights and dancing animations, not emojis, dancing animations popped around. This would be a time when technology would help me make a living. But this would also be a time where technology would consume me and have me questioning whether or not there was more to life than the screen in front of me. Now fast forward to the year 2015. This would be the year that I would make my first of what would be many trips to Asia. And there, I would be shown the future of our world with technology. From the moment I arrived in Hong Kong, nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to see. No Lonely Planet guide, no Wikipedia, no website, no person, no nothing could prepare me for what I experienced the moment that plane door opened. I took my first step and there, in the Hong Kong International Airport, I felt an energy an energy like nothing I had felt before. In front of me laid a city that was connected, seamlessly working together and driven by technology. And after those first steps, I was swiftly guided through the airport, hearing sounds and languages and experiencing cultures I never once had heard. And as I was guided through customs, I arrived at this high-speed train. A high-speed train that takes people from the airport to the heart of this lively city. As I approached the train, I had my ticket in hand, I took my seat, and off we went. 24 minutes no more, no less. 
we arrived in the heart of Hong Kong. And little did I know, this little card, this credit card looking card I held in my hand would actually be my first experience in an almost cashless society. This card, this card would be my forever travel companion, allowing me to travel anywhere in the city, in the country, beyond borders, never having to purchase another train ticket again. This card would be my new wallet. No longer did I have to worry about, do I have enough local currency? Do I, do I have enough cash? I could buy any good and service with just this card. This card would help me get into my office. This card would be my new ID. And so, so much more. And after this experience, I was taken to China. And there, I was shown yet again the future of technology where artificial intelligence and facial recognition, electric cars and the sharing economy were all commonplace and to be expected. Where a person had a single application that allowed them to communicate with one another anywhere in the world, share pictures, stories, anything they wanted, and bank. It would allow them to pay their bills, their taxes, their rent, make donations, transfer money to anybody, anywhere, no matter their bank, no matter where they were. It would allow them to rent anything, bicycles, umbrellas, batteries, you name it, they could rent it, they could do it within a single app. This was just the beginning. After that first trip to Asia, I would be shown a world where technology was moving at a pace once unheard of, where new intelligent buildings and cities would rise from the ground in a matter of months rather than years, where transportation was reimagined, connecting people in cities in a matter of minutes rather than days where bridges were built connecting countries and seas that were once impossible, where innovation and connectivity were so commonplace it wasn't even a thought in anyone's mind. This would have me once again reimagining our future and our future with technology. Today in 2018, we're still finding ourselves, funny enough, searching for technology to solve our problems. Daily, we ask ourselves, is there an app for that? Is there an app for this? Is there an app for TEDx? But our lives have completely progressed beyond those expectations and those simple, simple needs of, did I forget to lock the front door today? Did I, do I need to order a car now or in 15 minutes to make sure I get to my meeting on time? And yet we still find ourselves today in 2018 opening an app, clicking a button, and hoping for the best. We're entering an exciting future. A future where technology will seamlessly become a part of our lives. Where no longer will we have to think, is there a solution to this problem? Instead, instead that problem will be solved for us. This future will be connected. This future will be seamless. This future will be driven by data. And this... This will be our control panel. My future, my future will have me being woken up at the optimal time each day. 
because of data from the sensors in my clothes, not because of the alarm clock that I forgot to set the night before. That, muse, that my house will be intelligent, communicating and connected with everything inside. Where music will be played to enhance my mood. Where coffee will be made and kept at the optimal temperature, never having to have a cold cup of coffee again. I, I know a few people got excited about that in the audience. <laughs> my future, my future will have me being given the important items of the day before I leave my house, so that when I am ready to take that step and go into the world, I walk out my front door knowing everything I need to be greeted by my car, driving up in the driveway after it had just finished a night of autonomously driving around other people making me money. <laughs> Not bad, right? While I slept, got my beauty sleep. And as I take a step in that car, we'll head to the airport, and as we're on the road, the vehicles around us will be sharing information with each other as to what's happening on the road ahead. There's a little bit of rain, there's a pothole here, there's an accident here. Making sure that I never have to worry about getting from point A to point B, and that it's always done efficiently and seamless. And at the same time, while those vehicles are sharing data with each other, my car is actually talking to my mechanic, saying, hey, here's where we are as a car. Oil looks like it needs to be changed. Tires, pressure's a little low. And are scheduling an appointment to drive itself to get serviced while I'm out of town. And as I arrive to the airport, I get out of the car, I board my plane, I take off and I arrive at LAX. And as I step off that plane, I am greeted by a sign at the airport that says, hello, Kyle, welcome to Los Angeles. And as I take a step past that gate, I read that sign, all happy and excited, someone cares, and a car is also being ordered for me. And that car is being triggered just so that as I walk through the airport, it knows exactly when to pull up to pick me up so I don't have to wait. And as I get in that car, I'm being checked into my hotel, my keys are being sent wirelessly to my phone, the meeting I'm headed to is being notified that I'm 15 minutes late because LA traffic, without me ever having to worry. My future, my future will change the way that I shop. Where I'll walk into a store to continue my shopping, not start it where I'll be able to experience clothes, what they look like on me or what they feel like without actually having to try them on. And yet, having it delivered to my door in a matter of hours rather than days. Where I'll be able to walk into a store, pull out what I need, and walk out without ever having to reach for my wallet. My future will have me being able to experience anything at any time, including this TED Talk, anywhere in the world as if I was there in the front row. I'll be able to sit in Singapore and sit courtside at a Lakers game. I'll be able to actually experience the Colosseum as it was fully built, as if it was just the day it was erected and I was standing in front of it. My future... My future will have money being digital, not paper. This vision of the future is becoming a reality. And as this reality shifts, we as humans will have come from looking or wanting specific technologies to solve our problems to instead expecting this Seamless life of fulfillment, where the word itself will completely disappear from our vocabulary and our way of thinking, allowing us to become human with one another and being able to step away from the screen in front of us. Thank you. <laughs>